Hello and welcome to the Beefy Tech channel. Today we've got a very extensively long video, but a very fun video nonetheless, because we're taking a look at general myths that people believe help the performance of the 7950X 3D and Ryzen 7000 processors alike. And up on screen, you're gonna have a list of exactly what we're going over in this video today, so you know what's coming up. I did want to mention that this video took me a lot of effort to put together, so if you do enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe as that would help me out greatly. Anyway, let's get started off with one of the most interesting one, and it's hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. I've gotten so many questions about HAGS, I simply had to include it as the first part of the video. So the way HAGS is supposed to work is that it robs a bit of CPU performance to help out the GPU performance, so if you're GPU bound, Hags could actually be beneficial, but Call of Duty, which is generally a CPU-bound game, might not see the exact same results. Also, just so you know, I did run everything as uncut as possible and essentially just fast-forwarded through the video so you guys can see the actual results. Now I'm fast-forwarding through again, specifically so you don't think I'm changing the results with, you know, editing or something like that. And even more for the next parts, you'll see that I do as little cutting as possible specifically so you guys get the exact results I'm getting live along with me. I did restart the computer right there, so that was a cut just so you know. And now I'm gonna go back into the gaming section and show you that HAGS is indeed enabled. Now we're gonna fast forward and do the benchmark again. Another interesting thing about HAGS is that it comes enabled by default within Windows 11. And given its nature of robbing some CPU performance specifically to attempt to help the GPU, it might not be ideal if you're on Ryzen 7000 of any kind within Windows 11, especially if HAGS is enabled for Call of Duty specifically. As you're gonna see, I'll have the results up, but essentially, HAGS is indeed significantly worse for Call of Duty. Robbing CPU performance isn't good because it increases the CPU bottleneck and hurts the achieved results, and as you can see, HAGS off wins hands down, no questions asked. And yes, just to clarify, I did turn off HAGS for the follow-up tests and restarted the computer before showing you the next part, as you can see over here, I'm recording on my camera rather than the PC, and you can see that all of the cores are turned on at the moment, and I'm gonna speed run quickly through a basic test so we can get a baseline of the performance. The reason I decided to record through camera is so you can get an uncut version of everything. The reason I, it, I'm saying uncut and I'm not recording with the PC is because we'll have to go into BIOS to turn off eight of the cores and to turn off SMT, and I wanted you guys to see that I'm not doing anything behind your backs. As you can see, to further reiterate that point, there's a phone with a timer on the left hand side, which makes faking the results even harder. As you can see, I'm dead serious about this and I want to show you guys that I'm being fully transparent with the results. You see the results here, I screenshotted them and now we're moving on to changing to 8 cores down from 16. While I definitely think that this is not that serious and that I could have definitely just edited the video and cut it in between and you guys would have definitely believed me, I don't want to leave any room for interpretation. Given the nature of these tests, there's always that one person that says, oh no, but what if you did something wrong? What if your settings are wrong? Well, here you go. I'm showing you all of my settings, how I'm doing it, and the entire process of testing, specifically so there's no questions left to be asked. What's better is better, what's worse is worse, and it's as simple as that. As you can see, in the top hand side of the computer, I only have 8 cores enabled. Now we speed run through the test again, and we see the results. In case if you're wondering why I decided to use the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 benchmark instead of a synthetic benchmark, or just other games in general, is because it makes it really easy for me to see individual CPU results and individual GPU results. We can pretty much completely ignore the achieved results as they were all within margin of error, look at the individual results, and get a good conclusion out of it that actually makes sense. Anyway, let's quickly go into the 8 versus 16 core situation. Mind you, both of these had simultaneous multi-threading on, and it was just 8 cores versus 16 cores. And as you can see, it's not even much of a question. 16 cores... Uh, cores with a frequency CCD still being enabled, was indeed faster by 20 FPS in the averages, and it was also faster in the 1% lows, the bottleneck was less, there's no question about it, 7950X 3D with 16 cores is faster than when only with 8 cores. Just out of curiosity though, I went into BIOS, and I disabled SMT while I was still on 8 cores. Now, I specifically wanted to compare against this result with SMT on, because I wanted to see if disabling SMT on 8 and 16 cores would affect the results in any way, shape, or form. The amount of people that have come to me and have said, disable SMT, your PC will run better, is baffling. 
Most of them haven't done their own research and are just going off YouTube videos, which is understandable to be entirely honest. There's a premise to disabling SMT that makes sense. You're dropping the temperatures because you're essentially halving the cores you're using. Say you have a 16 thread CPU, you suddenly have an 8 thread CPU. So it kind of does make sense, but Call of Duty scales really well with thread count and with a, a core count. So I generally believed that SMT was better to be left on despite the extra temperature that you could garner from that. I always went to the option of getting better thermal paste, better cooling and keeping it cool that way rather than using SMT, but I did find an interesting result. When on 8 cores, it turns out SMT is in fact slightly better and by about 7 FPS. So that was very, very interesting to the point of where I decided to run the test again just to make sure because I couldn't believe it myself. So yes, the 7950X 3D, when running just 8 cores, does indeed perform about 7 FPS better within the benchmark, while SMT is disabled. But there's a catch. It would appear that that is only when 8 of the cores are disabled and the 7950X 3D is running on the 3D cache CCD only. Yes, that does mean that this will not directly apply to when 16 cores are enabled, and that's particularly why I wanted to test that too. But look, I promised I would eat my words if I was wrong about something, and I was slightly wrong it would seem because 8 cores SMT off is indeed better than 8 cores SMT on. Mind you, this means it applies for things like the 7700X, the 7800X 3D, or disabling a CCD for the 7950X 3D. But you definitely don't want to do that as the 7950X3D performs better with both CCDs enabled. Anyway, in the background you're seeing me switch back to 16 cores, sorry I hit my microphone, specifically so we can also test SMT with 16 cores on. And I do have to admit the results were a bit weird. To such an extent that I was double checking all of my settings were correct prior to booting back into Windows and running the tests. Mind you, we're also going to have to stop by Ryzen Master specifically so we can double check that all the cores are indeed on. Yes, I've been using Ryzen Master essentially to hold myself accountable and make sure everything is working perfectly. You guys can see all of the cores are indeed enabled. SMT is still disabled, I did not turn it back on. And now we're going to run the benchmark again and see what the results are. Yes, to my surprise, I don't mean to spoil anything, but SMT was indeed still worse than having SMT on with 16 cores, which is the complete opposite of having the 8 cores on with SMT off versus on. Very weird results, I know. I did run the test again just to double check that that is the case, but it indeed was the case yet again to where SMT on while on 16 cores is better than having SMT off. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just as baffled because it makes no sense. It was literally just better a minute ago and now it is significantly worse than running with SMT on on 16 cores. As you can see, 470 average FPS with SMT on, 459 best case scenario with SMT off while 16 cores are indeed on. So I couldn't exactly tell you how that functions, but I could tell you what's better and it's SMT on. Anyway, let's check out the generic RGB software on versus off, and for this scenario I'll be using ASRock Polychrome as it's the uh, software I use for my ASRock motherboard to control the RAM sticks basically. Now I'll be, I'll be real with you, I don't know how important it is for me to control my RGB on the RAM stick specifically, but I had it on for a while and I've been using it for a while even throughout these tests until now, and I decided to see, okay, what happens if I were to disable it instead of keep it enabled? As we all know, RGB software does occasionally make a difference. And what you'll notice is that the performance is mildly better, but not really in the average FPS as that's only too higher, but it was better in the 1% lows with the ASRock Polychrome shut down versus it being on. What does that mean? It means that the CPU does indeed perform better without having to deal with the RGB software in the background. And this is a light RGB software versus a heavy one like IQ, which could be doing even more damage in terms of 1% lows. This means RGB software off is indeed better, but that is quite obvious. And this is a myth I'm really excited to debunk, specifically because people are essentially constantly asking me about what my NVIDIA control panel settings are. And I'll be entirely honest with you, I'm already aware that the NVIDIA control panel settings don't really do much at all. I always give them to people, but I do always warn them that they will probably apply them and see absolutely no difference, assuming their computer is already working as intended. Just to clarify, this benchmark result is essentially redone and it's not the same one as the initial baseline that we did, specifically because I wanted to reset everything to default after all the changes we made and test the GPU specifically. As you can see, we got 373 with 301 in the 1% lows, 
Same achieved FPS as we've been getting pretty much the entire way through. Now what I'm going to go do, so mind you, this was with the settings fully applied. I'm going to unapply the settings, restore them to dead default and run the same exact benchmark again and see if that makes absolutely any difference within the Modern Warfare 2 benchmark. As you can see, I even redid the shader optimization specifically to be 100% certain that it doesn't make any difference to the performance. And yeah, I don't mean to bore you with this, but I included this in the video more to get people to stop asking me about NVIDIA control panel settings. As you can see, after restoring them to default, we lost 2 FPS in the average results and we gained 2 FPS in the 1% lows. Margin of error, so they're basically exactly the damn same. Yeah, NVIDIA control panel doesn't actually matter all that much in the grand scheme of things, but what I have coming up here next definitely was a surprise for me because I did not expect for ISLC to actually matter at all. And yet here we are with me being surprised that it kind of did. Now, it's not going to be that type of thing that improves 1% lows or stuff like that. And hell, I have to say, my system's quite well optimized, quite well debloated, and yet ISLC showed some of the most impressive results out of all the changes that I've made today. You can follow along with what I'm doing on screen if you want to copy my settings on SLC. I clarified on screen with what exactly you should put in the free memories lower than, and then we're going to enter the benchmark and run it with ISLC versus off, which is going to be the base uh, default benchmark that I ran at the very start of the video, and we're going to essentially compare. What I noticed is that my 1% lows were immediately significantly better, and even pre uh, like you know pre-editing Dan was just there, surprised as hell, to see the 1% lows on the first run be at 320 instead of the usual 303 to 307 that I would normally see. So yes, I ran it again, specifically to double check, and the 1% lows were even better because they tend to be on second runs. And as you can see, while the average FPS was pretty much the same, mind you, both of these had the ASRock Polychrome RGB on, the 1% lows were substantially better with ISLC on, so I think I'm gonna keep on using ISLC. With that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. This test essentially debunked a lot of the beliefs on what helps performance on Ryzen 7000 and what doesn't help performance on Ryzen 7000 and gives you an answer on what exactly to use on your platform. I do intend to do this for Intel too. I've got my 13th gen Intel 13700K perfectly prepared for this exact test once I'm back from my little vacation as I'm celebrating my birthday this weekend on the 24th. I hope you guys have a good one and enjoy. Bye bye.